We will officially call the meeting to order. Um, first on our agenda, do we have any requests for public participation, Mr. Peterson? Thank you very much. Uh, next, we are looking for a motion to approve our consent agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Great, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Great, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. All, let's see, we'll start with Mr. Bodakowski. Aye. Mr. Schwartz. Aye. Mr. Wilkie. Aye. Mrs. Orton. Aye. Chair votes aye. We've got our consent agenda approved. Uh, next, we've got, I'm um, looking for a motion with respect to our regular agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Great. Any second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll again do a roll call vote. This time we'll start with Mr. Rodkowski. Aye. Mrs. Orton. Aye. Mr. Schwartz. Aye. Mr. Wilkie. Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Um, all right. Now we'll go into our superintendent's report, Dr. Hawker. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. We're happy to report that we, uh, we have about 230 kindergartners that have already pre-registered for uh, this upcoming school year, 2021-2022. Um, we just need to continue to focus on those pre-registrations and continue to get the word out. We would anticipate that number to be closer to 400 students. So obviously we've got a, a ways to go. So we, we would just ask everybody um, in, in the community to continue to encourage folks that might be bringing kindergartners to school next year to, to get that pre-registration in so that we can staff accordingly and, and be uh, scheduled accordingly. So that's a, it's a big challenge, but it's also not totally unexpected. Oftentimes, many years, we, we don't, obviously we really don't know the final numbers until we get much closer to the start of school. Um, I suspect lots of parents with kindergartners right now are not necessarily thinking about school for, for next year. And that's the, that's the report at this time. Great, thank you. Any questions for Dr. Hawker? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to our business topics and our first item is our principal report. Um, I believe we'll start out with the uh, crew from Jefferson, if that's okay. All right, welcome, glad you guys are here. We're here to present on behalf of Mrs. Streeter, who is out of the office right now. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the Pennies for Patients um, Hero Squad campaign that we just recently did. It went really, really well for our school. The kids were super excited about it. We um, launched some little competitions within the school. We were able to raise, so we set our goal for $5,000, which was just $500 more than last year. We raised $4,500. We wanted to try and beat that. We beat that within the first few days of the campaign. Wow. Um, we really went ahead and pushed the online portion of it. Just online alone, we were able to raise $9,500 online, and that all happened within the first week of a three-week campaign. Um, we also did our, uh, like a cash and coin week. So we had dress-up days to go along with that where they would bring in pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and then their dollar bills. And that alone raised another like $2,800. So our total came to $12,857. Um, just to give you kind of an idea, our top classroom raised over $1,600. And then we had $1,400 and $1,300 in our top three classrooms alone. Um, something that we did to kind of incentivize us is um, we offered a night at the movies or afternoon at the movies, a little basket for the top fundraising classrooms. Kids were really excited about that. We had one student alone that raised $740. Um, so kudos to him. Um, the kids, they really did understand that they were, it's good to have these projects to show kids what it's like to, to give. And I think the kids really started to understand that kind of stuff. Um, I'm gonna have Dinah just talk a little bit about what she did to kind of encourage it in the classroom. All right. So um, basically, in each of our classrooms, we were given a goal of $500 or more. Um, and then various classrooms, I kind of went around and talked to some other teachers. Um, they did things like when people put money into the jars, they would all clap and cheer for each other, which just got the kids even more riled up and excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the classrooms incorporated the money into um, their actual money units in math. <coughs> so they were learning about what quarters, dimes, nickels all cost, or are, are worth. So then they used that to 
incorporated into their math lesson. So that was really cool to see um, that the other classrooms were doing fun things like that. Um, and then we had, uh, so the kids were so jacked and so excited about the movie parties, the pizza parties, things that they could earn, um, the little rinky dink prizes that they could get for raising specific amounts of money. They were just super excited and it was a great cause to raise for cancer awareness. Um, some of the other things that we did that were cool, um, we did a Flash 48 challenge. So it's how much money you could raise within 48 hours. And I don't remember what the amount was that they had to raise. $250. And then so every classroom that raised 250 got a free pizza party. And then something else that was kind of neat um, that wasn't expected, last week Thursday Mrs. Streeter said that every single classroom got to have a popcorn and a movie party, movie party in the afternoon. So the kids really, really enjoyed that. It was just the whole three weeks of it, I feel like the school was a buzz. It was really fun. kind of sharing their excitement um, through the three weeks of sharing all of their donations. <laughs> okay.
one quick thing to add is, um, so I had another school call me and ask if they wanted to have a little friendly competition for the pennies for a patient, and we were done with our fundraiser already, so I said, well, how about we join forces, and, and there was a couple other schools doing the pennies for a patient, and let's see how much a difference in private schools can raise by the end of the year. Great, that's fabulous, very impressive. Does anyone have any questions? So do they get to duct tape any of you to the wall for? No, they yeah. don't. <laughs> 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 That's what I thought. <laughs> That's only Nicole. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, does the board want to make a motion to make them the official campaign dollar fundraisers for the district for all future <laughs> building projects? <laughs> we can look at that too. That's really impressive. That's amazing that you all did got the kids involved and could do such great things. Um, appreciate that. Any other questions for? Well, thank you so much for representing your school tonight and sharing with us that awesome project. So please pass on how proud we are of everybody at the school for that. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll invite uh, Dr. Luton up. Thank you, President Seeks, members of the board. Uh, I, I get to talk to you a few times tonight, so I'm going to try and be as short as possible. Uh, first thing I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to show a little slideshow here, is on our music department at Dickinson Middle School. Um, if one word comes to mind, I guess it would be community. Um, I think of those three women that teach uh, music in our school, and they just do a phenomenal job of making kids feel like they belong or they're a part of something. And I think that'll be evident in the pictures. If you've seen any of the stuff we've done, um, you've obviously probably felt that. Uh, but you're going to see uh, some pictures. We had to move to the forum with band uh, this year just to create more space in between individuals. Uh, you're going to see some school pictures and some smiles. Uh, we've tried to do some work with concerts, uh, even though uh, in the middle of COVID. Uh, we've even gone outside and practiced when possible. Uh, and then something to really think about is um, as the world changes, um, our teachers have done an amazing job of trying to come up with different ways to expose kids to music. So you, know, you see some different things with world drumming, uh, guitar. Um, this week, like, we were working with uh, some composer in England, and we were evaluating and providing feedback on some stuff that he was working on. So just all kinds of things to make it real. Uh, just so you know, uh, our world drumming kids, they can go on to like a percussion class now at the high school. The high school is doing some wonderful things too. And then uh, the guitar kids, they can go on to garage band, but I think you got to audition. So <laughs> go ahead, finally. beginning of this, she says, we're the masked band. This is the masked drummer. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, the next thing I wanted to visit with you about is uh, last year we were approached um, to offer uh, algebra at the middle school next year. Uh, and um, so right away, two things that you need to know about that is that next year we'll offer, we'll offer algebra at the middle school for our kids. Uh, we, we began creating a track, and, and when I say track, uh, it, it's not a static track. So two things. First thing to remember is it's not static, so kids go in and out of it as needed. Um, they re receive supports as needed. Uh, and then the other thing is that we, we took uh, great diligence in making sure that if a kid is goes through middle school and he's in algebra in eighth grade, he is going to get those sixth through eighth grade standards. They're just occurring in sixth and seventh grade. Uh, if he or she struggles and it doesn't work, we have supports in place uh, to assist those individuals, and, and maybe it doesn't end up working for them. But just know that it's not a static, it, it's very flexible in nature. And uh, why don't you pull up that diamond, Twyla, really quick. So I clicked through this together this morning, and, and at the top, I guess I forgot that we were in a big room. <laughs> but at the top is, is algebra and advanced grade, six advanced uh, grade math. Uh, and those arrows illustrate all the different uh, interventions, uh, enrichments that we have in place for our students when it comes to math at Dickinson Middle School. And that's, I just wanted you to look at those arrows, and, and I, I can't, you can't read it, but maybe you can look at it later. But that's the, the key is that it's not static and that individuals receive supports as needed. So I'd entertain any questions on any, either two of those items. Thank you, Dr. Luton. Any questions for Dr. Luton? Other than the obvious, which is why wasn't there a cowbell in the drum piece, do you know? You know, um, if you do come to Dickens Middle School, there are, are cowbells on occasion. Ms. Dykema does utilize them, so okay. it, it is entertaining. Thank goodness, I'm relieved to hear that. They did a great job, obviously, um, although I do really love cowbells. Anyone else have any questions for Dr. Luton? Do yeah. um, you have any, just with this algebra program, do we have any guess how many students will be a part of that, or could be a part of that next year? You know, um, so next year, right now, uh, President Seeks, there are roughly, uh, it's in the high 20s, almost 30. Right. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, just below the top advanced math, there's a thing called uh, Team Taught. Uh, and what we've done with that Team Taught math is uh, we've started to use some of our, our interventionists uh, to push into classrooms and team teach with uh, our math teachers in seventh grade. And what they do is uh, they're not only assisting those kids that, that need a little bit of extra help, so they're small group breakouts. Oftentimes when you go into those classrooms, you'll probably see three different groups working. Like as an example, um, last week I was in uh, Ms. Jacobson and Mr. Long's class, and Ms. Jacobson had three kids that she's identified, she thinks are probably, she's gonna be able to um, place in the algebra class next year, even though they're not in that cohort. She thinks she can get them the standards by the time, end of the year. And then Mr. Long was working with some individuals on interventions for that class. So in this one class, you had enrichments. They're actually teaching Pythagorean theorem, which is taught in eighth grade. And then they were working on interventions on kids that were struggling with seventh grade curriculum. And then in the middle, there were kids doing learning checks. And then when Ms. Jacobson was done and kids were doing what they needed to do, she, she pushed back in and helped those other kids. So um, it'll be probably more than, more than um, it'll be in the low 30s, I'm guessing. So. Great, very impressive, so great. Um, one thing to consider is that we will, uh, our hope is that those individuals will have um, that take eighth grade algebra and they pass eighth grade algebra uh, will receive high school credit, uh, but that they're still required to take those three credits of math within high school. So it's not a, it's not an easy way out or whatnot. So sure. you have to, you just have to take more math essentially, but it gets you deeper into the math curriculum within the high school. So. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions for Dr. Luton? Well, thanks for sharing and all the great things going on at the middle school, appreciate it. Uh, next on our uh, topics, we've got um, Best Friend Mentoring Program. We've got a new director, I see Ms. Billings there as well, and uh, Ms. Rabbit, welcome.
Well, good evening, President Seeks and members of the school board. It's our privilege to be here and just give you some brief updates. I understand we have a 10 minute limit, so I <laughs> cut my 20 page <laughs> okay. notes down to just a couple pages. But I'm here with Angie Rabbit, our new executive director at Best Friends, and then Caitlin Nigan, who's an AmeriCorps VISTA member. And I just wanted to give you kind of a scope of where we've come from and where we are. In case you're not familiar with the Best Friends Mentoring Program, we're very similar to Big Brothers, Big Sisters, although we're not affiliated, we're an independent, non-for-profit. We've been around for 25 consecutive years, and we provide one-to-one -one friendship based mentoring to kids in the public schools who are largely referred to us through the Dickinson Public Schools, uh, Stark County Social Services, parents and guardians in the community, and throughout playgrounds, lunchrooms, classrooms, these mentors and mentees are engaging in conversations peppered with phrases like, you can do it, I hear you, you can take the next step, let me help you, how was your week, and hundreds of other phrases to provide extra support to these at-risk Dickinson Public School students. We're one of an estimated seven formal mentoring programs in North Dakota, and the only one that we're aware of that's west of the Missouri River. And while our base has been the Dickinson Public Schools in Stark County, we have expanded into Bowman, Henninger, and Western Morton counties. Over the 25 years that we've operated, we've estimated that we've worked with about 3,500 youth ages 6 to 16. Angie and myself are the only two full-time staff, and then we're working with two AmeriCorps VISTA members, Caitlin and Paige Langhorn, uh, supplied, supplied to us through a federal grant. Why are we here? Well, again, I would like to introduce Angie Rabbit as the new executive director at Best Friends, and she replaces Chris Fair, that I'm sure many, many of you are familiar with as the former board, uh, president of the school board. She's the first new director in 20 years. Uh, we wanted to thank you for your support. I uh, just especially wanted to call out Brent, um, a nine-year mentor with Best Friends, and Michelle, a five-year mentor. Uh, they've been program advocates, and we we're very grateful to you for, for that. Um, we've gone through four transitions this past school year, uh, past COVID, from a, a, an array of virtual mentoring programs to some supply platforms to community-based, and now we're slowly reintroducing our mentors back into the schools. And uh, there's been some challenges with that. Um, you know, not being able to be in the, in the public schools has been a challenge. We've not been able to widely recruit mentors. Uh, there's been some proximity men issues with mentors and mentees. Uh, there's been economic impacts with uh, mentee families as well as mentors. Uh, so our numbers have gone down. We're approximately at about 55 matches right now. Our referrals are picking up again, and we're very grateful to uh, businesses in the community like the Subway and Village, which has donated an estimated 200 vouchers for meals for mentors and mentees to use, and the West River Community Center, which has supplied dozens and dozens of, of community passes. Um, but for the first time in a year, uh, we're active in the majority of the public schools. Our mentees and mentors are slowly beginning to meet again over the lunch recess hour, and this has helped tremendously, especially in cases where we have logistical and communication issues with parents and guardians. Uh, we are here to um, ask for a couple of things. First of all, for continued support for lunches for our mentors and mentees when they meet in the public schools. Uh, believe it or not, conversation over a meal is a, an extremely big conversation starter, and we don't take those for granted. So we would like to ask you for your, for your support on those. Secondly, as the Dickinson Public Schools implements the career-based academies, uh, we would appreciate the chance to talk to strategists and other implementers in using best friends, the experience that we provide toward credits given to students exploring careers in elementary education, counseling, business communication, leadership, psychology, and sociology. Uh, currently, the split schedule at the high school is a challenge for high school mentors and being able to come to the schools during and the only way that we're able to facilitate it is if they have an off period. Uh, DHS mentors have accounted for upwards of about 40% of our mentors annually. 
and uh, we're hoping that with increased access to these students that we'll be able to continue to use them. We're hoping possibly under your uh, developing career academy model. I just wanted to highlight a couple of our high school mentors. Uh, one in particular, Dawson Richter, who's a, a junior at the high school. He's working with one of our referrals from the Southwest Judicial Court. Uh, they meet on Sundays at the community center to play basketball. I, I've heard just tremendous uh, positive accolades from both the uh, mentee's mom as well as the mentee's mom, or mentor's mom, Angie and I met at a business uh, event at, the, uh, at Batfish Brewery. We work with multiple siblings from one family. Some of you may know the Hopefoff family. Um, Tanner, Trevin, Taya Hopefoff. Taya is a basketball player this year. Some of you might be aware of it. She's a high school senior. Uh, Tanner was a previous mentor. He's gone into the business world, moved back to Dickinson. He's now currently on our board of directors. We sometimes work with generations of families of mentors and up to four family members of mentors at, at one time. Uh, best friends, we're very cost effective. Uh, we're a proven strategy for at-risk youth who may fall through the cracks of Dickinson Public School, school, school Services. And while we've always had a strong working relationship with the public schools, we're open to new strategies, to focusing our partnership going forward. So with that in mind, I'd like to take any questions that you may have for us uh, before we close our time with you. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Any questions for best friends we represented today? Well, Tina, at this time, I'll just um, thank you all for all the work you have done, Mr. Billings, and we look forward to getting to you, you better, Ms. Rabbit, and, and uh, we look forward to this continued partnership that we have with you all. So. Thank you so much for coming tonight and sharing. We appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll leave some brochures here in case anybody would like to take one later. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Call Dr. Luton back up wearing a different hat uh, with respect to the North uh, Campus, the Halbert property. And yeah, first, I, that was great. I really appreciate that. And I, I think the ideas of partnershiping with them on, on some of those uh, uh, capstone projects for our seniors is a great idea. Um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about CTE, and I got a little bit of uh, slideshow. Last month was February was CTE month, and I proposed to Dr. Hawker the day before the board meeting if I could I could uh, meet with you guys, <laughs> and I was a little late, so I'm going to kind of show some pic so show some pictures. I think if I had the theme was community for music, I think the theme would be looking out for kids. Um, I, I, there's two CTE teachers in a room, and I, uh, you know, I could probably give examples uh, for both of them. But uh, Miss Lehman uh, in the back here, uh, we had a kid that had a, a work experience kind of fall through, and sh her and Mr. Schmidt actually were able to find an alternative work experience for this kid that was really bummed out. Uh, and then, and then we did come through, and, and you'll see his picture in here later that he does have a, a work experience in Highlands. Uh, uh, the other morning at six in the morning, I, I that's when I usually leave for work, and I heard the shower running downstairs, and my eldest son was up at six in the morning, and I was like, what, "What's going on?" <laughs> so when I got home that night, I go, "Why? Why were you up at six? Oh, I had practice with Mr. Schmidt for construction. So, um, <laughs> kudos to them. I thought that was pretty cool. My boy doesn't get up early for anything unless <laughs> it's making money. So. Um, you're going to see a video here in a little bit, and uh, or a, a couple slides. You're going to see Ag Class, Range Camp was alive and well. FFA is going on. Advanced Drafting, you're going to see some NAWIC. Uh, we, we participate in a national competition every year for drafting. We do well. We have winners almost every year. Uh, you're going to see some auto pictures. You're going to see some culinary arts, some early childhood stuff, which is a really popular class. Uh, our midget market had to close because of COVID. So kudos to our teachers. They like adjusted. We got within before school started even, I think we, we had a vending machine and, and kids are running that. We still got banking hours for the student bank. See some goofy power sports pictures. Uh, see some kids in constructions framing and doing some tool operation. Our health sciences, you're gonna see the dental assistant stuff uh, and some EMR items. Uh, you'll see some welding pictures, tech and engineering. You'll just see some kids doing some electrical engineering stuff. 
Uh, and then there's some capstone work experience, which really that career, that uh, moving to career academies really begins to allow kids that really become completers in a CTE area, which incidentally, there's tons of research behind CTE completers and kids who participate in CTSOs and just being more successful in life. So uh, CTE is a very important part of our school. Uh, but you're going to see, uh, we got a kid working at Chad's Auto right now, uh, Auto Kid. We got kids working at Prairie Rose. Uh, kudos to Miss Weiler for letting us in there and work with kids that aren't going to be early or elementary ed majors. Um, we got kids at Highlands Engineering, Therapy Solutions, and then we got uh, kids obviously in the dental offices, uh, St. Luke's, Abel, and Dickinson Fire Department. So go ahead, Twyla. So lots of kids learning by doing. Um, the last part, and Twyla, if you want to pull up that, I have that um, CT timeline. Um, I was asked to give a short presentation just on uh, on the Halliburton property the or the North Campus, I guess. Um, that right there is 13 items with 52, I believe, uh, tasks that need to be completed, and that's probably only a few of them. Uh, or uh, a partial list of them. It's kind of a working document. Uh, what you need to know, wh what we've kind of done so far, or recently, I guess, is we've developed a rough draft on some governance items, which you, you, you may, uh, today, you, if you decide, you may assign some individuals to that body. Um, we've done some tours with DSU and, and DHS uh, CTE teachers. Uh, our advanced drafting kids have actually been out in the buildings, uh, taking measurements, coming up with ideas. Um, we've testified before the legislature, um, been at Southwest uh, night with the legislators. We've done a lot of different things to try and promote and uh, engage the community, I guess, in, in the future of this, this area. What's kind of occurring right now is this timeline we've developed and, and we need to finalize. Uh, starting tomorrow, we actually have meetings with DSU. Um, in regard to capstone projects and how our seniors could be afforded either uh, opportunities to start taking classes within those those pathway areas that that we've adopted, which is really cool and exciting when you start thinking about a kid when he's a senior starting to get his experience uh, at the college level or in the work workplace. Uh, so those meetings actually start tomorrow. Our first ones with the ag department. Uh, we've developed uh, the three pathways, obviously, at the high school. Um, f regard to the future, uh, hopefully you guys will adopt that governance. That's uh, kind of in a rough draft format right now. Uh, sooner or later, you're going to have to identify a director. Uh, the middle school principal probably can't do it forever. Uh, <laughs> the uh, advisory committee work is really, really important in the next two months. Um, getting advisory committees for each pathway or each, each CTE area and using them to begin driving programming. When we move into this building, the opportunities are endless and, uh, and we need to make sure that we are doing what industry wants and then taking advantage of that opportunity. We got a new building, we might have money for new equipment. What a tremendous opportunity. Engaging those people uh, in the near future is paramount. Uh, if that does not happen, it doesn't happen in a successful way, we've wasted our time. Um, eventually, obviously, use of space, uh, wh what's going where. Uh, sooner or later, uh, when we get out of this place of limbo where we don't know what type of funds we're going to have, we'll have to get a CMAR or an architect. And then part of that programming is PD opportunities that probably need to begin this summer uh, with our CTE teacher. I talked to Director Catherine couple weeks ago and she's looking into grants that we could possibly uh, provide um, 
funds, equipment, whatever, for some of our CTU teachers to begin working alongside uh, some of the uh, business uh, industry experts. I'll entertain any questions. Dr. Luton, who's a part of the rough draft? Uh, so this is kind of like a little snapshot of what's happened. Um, yeah, th that document, uh, Mr. Hepperly, Mr. Harris, Mr. Hohertz, uh, Miss Trustum and I sat down and, and kind of sketched that baby out. I, I blurred it because it's rough yet. Sure. Uh, Mr. Hepperly and I are meeting on Wednesday afternoon to try and finalize some of those things. So really, uh, um, when we built the middle school, we had something very similar. It actually had 13 committees, too, but it was a 29-month process. This is <laughs> process is probably going to be a little more expedited, but um, once you have this map, then you can kind of... The problem is everything's connected to everything. So if you don't have something laid out like this and you miss one thing, it's like a general contractor for a car, car or construction company. You know, they're masters of things like this. But that's the purpose of it, I guess. The one thing in green there uh, is communication. If we, don't, if we don't find a way to communicate and communicate well what's going on, um, the thing can go off track pretty quickly. So. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Luton? Let's take this opportunity to commend the, all of our staff uh, affiliated with the CTE program at our high school. It, it, wonderful things come out of there and we don't stop and pause and appreciate that enough. So we want to say thank you. Please pass that on and, and we want to thank you, Dr. Luton, and all those that have worked so hard um, on this CTE Southwest Area Center that we're working and putting together. We can't even imagine how much work that is and it's definitely a, a monumental undertaking and, and uh, you guys have done a great job and we look forward to that continue to move forward so thank you so much thanks for your support all right next we've got uh on in terms of business topics we've got the uh, budget input development committee update and um that was as you recall we had a special meeting in which we approved refinancing of uh, the bond, and so I don't know if anyone has any updates on that. Um, Mrs. Hunter, I think that's pretty much it. Is that right, or do we have anything else to add on that? No, not really. That was about all it was. Great. Um, thank you. Um, there's no more on that topic. We'll move into our uh, business topics, and uh, the first thing we have to do is, is with respect to, or not have to do, where we're entertaining the uh, motion with respect to a, um, a bond. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move to approve the initial resolution for general obligation school building fund bonds in the amount of $6,500,000 as presented. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. <laughs> Any discussion about that? Um, we had talked about this in the committee of the whole meeting about the um, idea that this um, funds could be used if approved for the public and all those type of things. Uh, we are able to um, use those funds for possible project. It could be the CTE Center. It could be in with our other schools, right, Dr. Hawker, in terms of the scope of this? That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with Mr. Wilkie. Aye. Orton? Aye. Mr. Schwartz? Aye. Mr. Rodakowski? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Next, we've got um, the petition representing the organization of the DEA. We're looking for a motion. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move that pursuant to the provisions of section 15.1-16-10 of the North Dakota Century Code, the school board of the Dickinson Public School District number one recognizes all licensed personnel employed or to be employed by the board in positions requiring a license issued pursuant to chapter 15.1-13 of the North Dakota Century Code, except administrators and substitute teachers <coughs> as, an as an appropriate negotiating unit for the purpose of negotiation. Thank you, do we have a second? I'll second. It's almost a tie. I don't think we'll get to Ms. Orton this time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. Um, any discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, motion passes. Um, 
right. Next, uh, we're going to look for a motion in a second with respect to the board of the uh, that CTE governance body. Now I think we have one more motion. We do. You are always correct that I'm going to double check this, and we do. Thank you. So I'm looking for a second motion on that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move that pursuant to the provisions of Section 15.1-16-11 of the North Dakota Century Code, the school board of the Dickinson Public School District Number 1 recognizes the Dickinson Education Association as the exclusive representative of the appropriate negotiating unit for the purpose of the negotiation. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. Uh, any discussion? Seeing done none, we'll do a voice vote again. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, motion passes. Uh, next, we'll turn it over to Dr. Hawker just for a second before we look for um, we're regarding the CTE board. Thank you, Mr. President. Just in regards to uh, what Dr. Luton presented as we continue to move forward with plans for the uh, Career Tech um, campus, the North Campus that we're kind of talking about, the, the last year or so there's been a committee to help kind of guide that direction to hopefully get some funds from the state level. And it's become evident that we need to have a governance board organized to, to help uh, finalize the the working documents, the uh, perhaps the 501c3 um, application itself, those sort of things. And so there's been a, been a decision to uh, create a, a governance board of seven. And on that governance board, Dickinson Public Schools would have two representatives. And uh, those representatives obviously can be anybody that you would like to have. My recommendation might be um, perhaps President Seeks serving in one of those seats and, and perhaps your assistant superintendent, Mr. Keith Harris, who is also our facility director um, at this time, could serve in those capacities. But the, the next real step of that group is to uh, look through the, the documents that are presented. There'll be a meeting coming up uh, within the next month or so where uh, that whole, hopefully everybody this month kind of appoints their representatives from their organization and then those representatives get together and have their, their have a meeting to, to finalize the documents so that we can take the documents to the next level and have our attorney approve them and look them over um, before perhaps a formal approval. Thank you, Dr. Hawker. Um, we'll entertain a motion for board members for this. Mr. President. Mrs. Orton. I move to appoint board members Brent Seeks and Assistant Superintendent Keith Harris to represent the DPS Board on the CTE Governance Board for the first term of appointment. Furthermore, I authorize Board President Mr. Brent Seeks to review and upon satisfaction sign the Joint Powers Agreement Articles of Incorporation in the bylaws. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. Discussion. Um, I'll just bring up the note, I, I also, as a part of being on the board, I also serve on the RACTC board, and I know that board met last Wednesday to talk about this, and uh, while excited about this possibility, they, there was a lot of questions, especially regarding um, the, the bylaws and how this is all going to be put together and those type things, and so that board uh, put together kind of a subcommittee to kind of work out those things, and so it sounds like the way this is leaning is that if each organization is able to appoint folks to serve, then those folks will get together and like we talked about hammer this out. But there certainly will be uh, attorneys involved, just so you will know, my thought would be uh, before I would approve anything, I certainly would want our school district attorney to have reviewed that and, and make sure that it makes sense and all parties would have to feel like that document's good. So there's not, uh, as Dr. Um, Luton pointed out, this we're all hoping this thing can keep moving forward, and um, there's a sense of urgency to getting that done. But I certainly think it's going to take some time to uh, work through that stuff. But are there any other discussions about that? Other thoughts? All right, uh, we will do a roll call vote. We will start with uh, Mr. Rodakowski. Aye. Mr. Schwartz. Aye. Uh, Mr. Wilkie. Aye. Mrs. Orton? Aye. Chair votes aye. Um, next, I'm looking for a motion with respect to open enrollment applications. Mr. President. Mr. Wilkie? 
I move to approve the open enrollment application for a child of Mandy Snyder from Belfield Public, child of Karina Noble from Belfield Public, child of Wayne Brango from South Park Public, and a child of Lindsay Holzenagel from South Park Public, all to Dickinson Public Schools as per the open enrollment policy. Thank you. Do we have a second? Mr. President, I'll second that. Great. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion passes. Uh, next, we're looking for a motion with respect to early resignations. Mr. President. Mrs. Schwartz. I move to approve the early resignation benefit for Candace for special education instructor Roosevelt Elementary, Tammy Gallopo, Title I lookalike instructor Jefferson Elementary, Alexandra Kempenich, Grade One instructor Lincoln Elementary, Kathy Kudarowski, Family and Consumer Science instructor Dickinson High School, Ruth McCabe, Grade One instructor Lincoln Elementary, Shelly Schnitzer, Grade three online instructor district wide, Granny Sherman, kindergarten instructor Lincoln Elementary with an effective date of May 27th, 2021. Lori Olson, library paraprofessional Dickinson Middle School, and Donna Sullivan, library paraprofessional Berg Elementary with an effective date of May 26th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Orton. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes. Next, we're looking for a motion with respect to the superintendent's evaluation. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. Upon review of the individual evaluation, I move that cumulatively board members have rated the superintendent as satisfactory for each of the six performance areas role and vision setting, board relations, human resource management, curriculum and student support services, community relations, and operations and resources management. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with uh, Mrs. Orton. Aye. Mr. Rodakowski. Aye. Mr. Wilkie. Aye. Mr. Schwartz. Aye. The chair votes aye. All right, next we've got a uh, motion with respect to a policy, looking for a motion. Mr. President. Mr. Wilkie. I move to reaffirm policy ABCC Dickinson Public School wellness policy and assign its new, new descriptor code at ABCA. Thank you, Mr. Wilkie. A second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Orton. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, we will start with Mr. Wilkie. Aye. Mr. Schwartz. Aye. Mrs. Orton. Aye. Mr. Rodakowski. Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right, next we have an opportunity to make a motion to reschedule our April school board meeting. Mr. President. Mrs. Orton. I move to reschedule the April school board meeting for Monday, April 12th, 2021 at 5 p.m. at the Professional Learning Lab. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Great. Any discussion? If you recall, it was originally moved later because of the traditional away school board conference, but since that's not happening the way it was, there was the idea to move it to its uh, normally scheduled time. Um, any other discussion about that? All right. Seeing none, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. And then we have possibility of scheduling a special meeting um, with respect to the bond looking for a motion. Mr. President. Mr. Schwartz. I move to schedule a special school board meeting on Wednesday, March 17, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Via Zoom. We're looking for a second? I'll second. All right, discussion. Uh, we don't think that meeting is going to take a while, um, but it is St. Patrick's Day <laughs> for, for those of us who care. Um, any other thoughts? What's the meeting for? The meeting, is, Ms. Hunter, can you share that? Yes, when we met last time and by the board, board appro approval, I can't even speak today, I apologize. By board approval today for the $6.5 million initial resolution, or I'm sorry, this is for the refunding. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, it's a Monday. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, for the initial resolution for the refunding of that bond, we 
you guys approved it at the special board meeting last week to allow that to go to bid. And so that meeting will be to approve the bid. Perfect. And again, we expect that meeting to be a short one, correct? Yeah, maybe 10 minutes. Perfect. Okay, any other discussion with respect to that motion? All right, seeing none, we will do a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes. Um, let's see, any other announcements? Don't see any announcements here, so with that, we will uh, officially adjourn. <laughs>